Hey everybody, how you doing? AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, today we're going to talk about dummy loads. As I have a lot of customers that ask me what I use for a load when I test their amplifier. Or just amplifiers in general, or when you know what I do with my own personal amplifier. So, um, I have uh, numerous loads. I have a very large uh, convection cooled load that was removed from a broadcast site, an AT&T ship to shore site that was decommissioned down in New Jersey. I have a bird oil cooled load with a fan kit on it to double its dissipation rating, which I use with my spectrum analyzer. And then I have an Ultronics load that I use, a large load I use for, uh, but not as big as the first load, that I use for VHF and UHF amps. So I mostly work on HF amps. Uh, so usually I'm using the large load. And uh, you have to be careful with dummy loads because they're not all rated for this, you know, for all bands, you know, for, you know, HF, VHF, UHF. So you guys have to keep that in mind. You also want to make sure that the resistor value hasn't drifted over time because then you can get a false reading or you could even possibly damage your amplifier. So, um, the reason why I don't really like oil cooled loads is because over time the oil is supposed to be changed and then if the resistor ever fails, the resistor costs, it, it, it costs a lot of money. They're not cheap. So, that's why I prefer my large convection cooled load, which I'll show you in a second. So, the way I have things set up here is what you're looking at is a four-port commercial switch. I got all this stuff for nothing when I cleaned out that site, so that's why I have it. It's like stupid overkill, I know, but um, I had loads of it. I had a whole bunch of these. Uh, got rid of most of them. So, I have some spares. So, the way I have it set up here is I have two different operating stations. I have my station with you know in my work area then i have another station in another room and basically this has two inputs and then two outputs so the two inputs will switch will crisscross with the outputs so if the operating station in my shop is connected to the antenna and the other one's connected to the dummy load i flip it and then the uh, shop station goes to the dummy load and then the other one goes to the antenna get the picture so that allows me to not have to connect and disconnect, connect and disconnect, because connectors have a connection life, connect, disconnect life, before the tolerance start to change. And, you know, with a connector, you have attenuation with, you know, coax, connectors, everything in line. So you just don't, you know, it's not good to be, you know, plus it eats up time. So everything stays connected. I just connect the, I have a jumper, and over time, after I use it a million times, I have to, I'll, I'll swap the connector if need be, you know, if it gets worn down. But, so, I'm going to show you the connection points on this thing. A zip tie sitting there. So, um, I had to disconnect this at one point, and I kept that so it wasn't putting too much pressure on the coax. So, anyway, we have a piece of coax going to the dummy load, 7 8 Then we have one going to the shop, another piece of 7 8 then we have an adapter going to RG393 to the upstairs station. And then we have inch and 5 8 going out to the antennas, which are 100, uh, about 150 feet away from the house. Uh, in conduit, buried three foot down underground. I used a ditch switch, trencher thing. And then I have another piece of 7 8 which goes to uh, a different antenna out there. So I can switch this manually or I can switch it electronically. And then I'll show you the dummy load. This is made by Electro Impulse. I think it's got like 30 or so Cantle resistors in there in here. Just think the little Cantana has a little tiny resistor. These resistors I think are um, I think they're eight yeah they're 18 inches long by I believe an inch in diameter. And I think they're 30 of them at least 30 in here. All sorts of different values to get to the 50.5 that I I see at the actual connection point. So, got the inch and 5 8 connection on it, which adapts to 7 8 7 8 right angle, to 7 8 flange, to 7 8 coax. So, when you send an amplifier in for repair, it's going into this. You know, I've tested some really big stuff into this in the past. I don't really get involved in that stuff anymore. It's just too heavy. But, this thing used to pump out some serious heat. It was like a little heater. <laughs> but, uh... I hope that answers questions. Uh, 
You know, I use all bird equipment when I'm taking power measurements, and uh, I don't play around, you know, so, you know, it's, uh, it's critical to have a good load. Everybody should have a good load. You know, when you go to test an amplifier, you don't want to test it on the air. You can create, uh, you know, you, you end up interfering with uh, QSOs that are going on. It's just not good. So it's a really good idea to have a good dummy load that can handle your amplifier. And another thing you have to be careful of with like antennas and smaller loads is, you know, you have to follow the the instructions and the ratings because you can easily boil the oil in one of those things and start to come out and get burnt. You can damage the resistor. If the resistor opens, you can end up damaging the amplifier, uh, arc the band switch. You know, if you put an open on the output of the amp, it's just really bad. Then you'll end up sending it to me for repair. So, so thanks for watching. I hope this helped out. Amprepairguy.com 203-892. 4119, one other thing, this switch is made by RCA, it weighs about 45 pounds, a lot of brass. But, uh, like I said, all this stuff was free, part of the deal when I cleaned out that place, so, um, you know, if I had to buy all this stuff, it would have cost a fortune. But, okay, take care, amprepairguy.com, and I'll catch you later.